Well, here we have all the components of the briquette press. This is the main body. A piece of square steel tube where the pulp's compressed into the briquette. Center tube coming up through it with holes drilled through to assist with drainage. All of this has just been painted, so I thought I'd uh, show you it being put together and you can understand how the mechanism works. Looking down into the chamber now, and you see the tube. The idea of the tube through the briquette is to uh, leave it with a circular hole in the middle which will allow it to dry out a lot quicker than if it was a solid block. This chamber is about six inches deep. The briquette is compressed from the bottom uh, down to a depth of about two inches so it's about a three to one ratio. Okay I'll call this bit the uh, push rods. This comes up through the bottom of the chamber that you've already seen. Pressing up on a loose piston. Now at the bottom we have this sort of crosshead mechanism with trunnions. There's a wooden block in the centre which uh, guides this over the steel tube. In fact, there it is. I anticipate that will wear out but it'll be easily replaced. So I'll go ahead and fit that first. Right, the push rods are now fitted and I've also put on uh, a depth stop. Just got this uh, bolt so it can be adjusted. The moment this is shown at the um, bottom of the travel. And that corresponds to these rods being right at the bottom of the chamber. So that gives the maximum swept volume of the uh, piston compressing the briquette. I've made the depth stop adjustable so I can reduce the volume in the chamber which might become important later. You can also see how I've constructed these trunnions just from uh, sawing off some large bolts and still see the hexagon head there showing where it hasn't been welded. This is the loose piston which will drop into the chamber. And if I operate the push rods, you can see exactly what's happening. I thought about drilling holes around the outside of the chamber for added drainage, maybe down through the piston. But I've made the piston a loose fit, it's probably a millimetre clearance and I think enough water will come out through there but I can always drill holes later. This is the loose cap which fits over the top. It doesn't have any extra means of holding it down. So now you get a real idea of what's happening inside. And next we have the operating lever which will eventually have a wooden handle attached here. The key thing about this design is the fulcrum for the lever is directly on top of the cap, directly in line with the action up through the piston. So this will create a force which will always hold the cap down without any need for extra clamps. The operating range of this will be from about here up to top dead centre here. Uh, on the compression stroke. 
Now when this is being used to eject the briquette, this will be moved to this alternative fulcrum and again it will operate from about here up to top dead centre. Here's the machine with the connecting rods fitted, bottom end secured with a linch pin, and the top end has the pin formed with a, an M12 high tensile cap head screw. Uh, incidentally there's the handle that's going to go in, a piece of green ash. Here's the assembled machine. The handle just drops into this taper. The top of the connecting rod has a slot. The idea of that is it gives this region of lost motion during which nothing useful happens, but it just allows the handle to drop back at the end of the stroke and sit back out of the way. Now, the key feature of this design is that the mechanical advantage will change during the stroke. So at the start of the stroke when the pulp contains a lot of water it's easily compressed. So we've got a modest amount of mechanical advantage. This increases as we get to the top of the stroke when the mechanical advantage becomes quite huge. But up there I think it's going to be needed because with most of the water already expelled, it's going to be really hard work compressing that uh, briquette. Hopefully you can see that. I'll pull it one more time. For the ejection stroke, the lever's moved here, the cap's taken off, another pull of the lever and hopefully you see here pistons come right to the top so the briquette's easily lifted off. This uh, arm that's been welded on here just provides a stop so in this position the machine just rests happily. Drop the handle back once more and the chamber is ready to be reloaded. The bottom stop down here, as I said before, was adjustable. The idea of that is that if there's too much charge in the chamber, we may get up here somewhere and not quite be able to compress the briquette um, without using some ridiculous force. In which case, I'll raise that bottom stop so the slightly less charge goes into the chamber at the beginning. So that'll be a matter of trial and error and will probably vary depending on the quality of the sawdust or the recipe of the pulp I'm using. So there we are, it's ready to go. I'm keen to see if it works. Here's the machine hung on the wall ready for use simply hangs into a pair of eye bolts screwed into the concrete and the bottom of the tube sits on a small wooden block the ground here runs away at a slight angle which is ideal, water will just run away first attempt
piece for that. I've set the depth stop up a little bit to start with. I can probably compress that slightly harder. This is a 20% mix of um, newspaper pulp in with the sawdust. That holds together pretty well. I've set the depth stop a little bit lower, so I expect this one to compress a bit harder. This bung goes in the top so that the central tube doesn't fill with pulp in this phase. Here are the two blocks uh, that were made about five minutes ago. The square tube they're formed in has a dimension of 110 millimeters, and these have held that dimension and they haven't expanded in that way at all. But the height has expanded by about 50%. They were compressed to 50 millimeters. I've just measured these now, they're around about 75, which is quite interesting. I expect these to uh, dry out to a final weight of about 300 grams and that conservatively will give each one about one kilowatt hour of energy. It's going to be used um, in the fire replacing oil so it's actually going to uh, save about 250 grams of carbon dioxide per block as well as probably six or eight pence monetary value. 